Welcome to the April edition of AJP Heart and Circulatory Physiology's video table of contents or from the editor's desk. This month we've published an interesting historical article on the development of the use of radioactive and fluorescent microsphere techniques to evaluate blood flow and 15 original research articles including two rapid reports. I'm sure you're anxious to get a taste of what's inside so let's get started. Rowe et al. used transcription factor expression profiling to identify estrogen-related receptor beta, a member of the nuclear receptor family of transcription factors as highly expressed in murine hearts and other highly oxidative striated muscle beds. Mice bearing cardiac-specific deletion of estrogen receptor beta myosin heavy chain knockout specific uh, deletion developed dilated cardiomyopathy and sudden death at about 10 months of age. Isolated adult cardiomyocytes from the MHC estrogen receptor beta knockout mice showed an increase in calcium sensitivity and impaired cardiomyocyte contractility, which preceded echocardiographic cardiac remodeling and dysfunction by several months. These observations suggest that ESRR beta is a critical component in the onset of dilated cardiomyopathy by affecting contractility and calcium balance. Baram et al. compared the function of skin fiber bundles from transgenic mice that overexpress a relatively low level of the peroxisome proliferator, proliferator activated receptor alpha, PPAR alpha, and non-transgenic litter mates. The mice were stressed by transverse aortic constriction and compared with shams. There was an approximate fourfold increase in PPAR alpha expression in transgenic shams compared to non transgenic shams. But transgenic transverse aortic constricted hearts showed the same PPAR alpha expression as the non transgenic constricted hearts. The rate of actinomycin. ATP hydrolysis was significantly higher in the transgenic Shan skin fiber bundles compared to all other groups. The transgenic constricted hearts showed an increase in phosphorylation of specific sites on cardiac myosin binding protein C and beta myosin heavy chain isoforms. Other et al. determined the role of specific histone deacetylases or HDACs in the regulation of endothelial cystathione gamma lyase. Reduced CSC gamma, mRNA expression, and protein abundance were observed in human aortic endothelial cells exposed to oxidized LDL and in aortas from atherogenic apolipoprotein E knockout mice fed a high fat diet compared with controls. The HDAC6 selective inhibitor tubicin and HDAC6-specific siRNA increased CSC gamma expression and blocked oxidized LDL-mediated reductions in endothelial CSC gamma expression and CSC gamma promoter activity, indicating that HDAC6 is a specific regulator of CSC gamma expression. Consistent with this finding, HDAC6 mRNA protein expression and activity were upregulated in oxidized LDL-exposed uh, human aortic endothelial cells, but not in human aortic smooth muscle cells. Overall, the authors suggest that inhibition of HDAC6 activity may improve endothelial function and prevent or reverse the development of atherosclerosis. Finally, Vranish et al. assessed popliteal artery reactive hyperemia and flow-mediated dilation before and after a three-hour sitting period in healthy young women and men. In addition, resting popliteal artery hemodynamics and calf circumference were measured before, during, and after sitting. Resting popliteal artery shear rate was reduced to a similar extent in both groups during the sitting period. This was accompanied by comparable increases in calf circumference in men and women. After the sitting period, popliteal artery FMD was significantly reduced in men, but not women. In contrast, both groups demonstrated similar reductions in hyperemic blood flow area under the curve, indicating impaired microvascular reactivity after sitting. These findings indicate that despite comparable reductions in shear rate, 
During three hours of uninterrupted sitting, macrovascular function appears protected in some young women, but the response was variable, whereas men exhibited consistent reductions in FMD. In contrast, the leg microvasculature is susceptible to similar sitting-induced impairments in men and women. Thank you for listening to this edition of AJP Heart and Circulatory Video Table of Contents. We hope you find these introductory videos of interest. As always, we appreciate your feedback, not only about the videos, but about any aspect of the journal you think can be improved. Write to us with your thoughts. We'll see you next month, and please remember to send us your best work now.